Welcome to Introducing the Apple iPad. I'm Brian Burton, and I will be providing the, this instructional opportunity to learn more about the new Apple iPad. Now, I am presenting this information before the actual product has been released to market, so if you're viewing this after it's been released, uh, please forgive me for any changes that have occurred, but I am basing this lecture upon the specifications that have been released by Apple, so they should be pretty close to accurate for your uh, consideration in developing your software or uh, applications for this particular device. As you're viewing through these, uh, do realize that I am focused upon developing software for the Apple iPad or iPhone or iPod Touch. Um, this is not made just simply on a how to use your iPad. This is part of a university course. Um, I'm making these lectures publicly available. Um, I don't make any warranty for this demonstration, so it is a use at your own risk. If you are interested in developing applications for iPad, iPhone, or iPod Touch, you can contact me at drburton at burtonsmediagroup.com. I do have a, a few students who have graduated from the courses that I offer and are looking for contract work or possibly employment in developing iPhone or iPad applications. Let's talk about the iPad. Now this is what we know about it pre-launch. Um, we're still about six weeks out before we're actually going to be working with the actual device. So all these are pre-launch considerations. Uh, of course all of this may change when we actually see the, the devices, but this is what we are expecting. First of all, we're working, going to be working with a one gigahertz processor. So you've got a limited amount of power for doing whatever you need to be able to do with your application. Storage capacity is 16 gigabytes to 64 gigabytes on these systems for the first version. I'm sure later versions will have a little bit more added to them, but for this original device we are talking 16 gigabyte to 64 gigabyte for everything that's going to be stored on there. There is no multitasking just like with the iPhone and iPod Touch. We're working with just simply one application running in its own sandbox at any one point in time. When you are developing and programming for the iPad, you might keep in mind that 3G connection is a possibility, but you cannot rely on it since not all of these devices are going to have 3G. You should instead rely upon wireless connections, so do not expect 3G to be there. Your resolution that you're going to be working with is very nice, 1024 by 768, so a very nice improvement over the iPhone's much smaller resolution. Um, apps written for the iPhone should run on the iPad. I've now been working with the uh, Beta 2, and it looks like the Apple has included some very nice things for being able to make your iPhone application work on the iPad. First beta, I was a little concerned, but the second beta, we're starting to see some vast improvements on making iPhone applications work on the iPad. Another design consideration when you start working on your application is that Per Apple's human guidelines for building your application, there are no default orientations. So you don't know whether it's going to be in landscape or portrait mode and how that's going to work. Another design consideration is that you should plan on using gestures. Gestures are going to be a very important part of the this touch media. Uh, we're not going to be using any kind of clicks though of course we'll have taps on buttons and things like that, gestures are going to become very important. Uh, as far as graphics are concerned, we are working with 24-bit depth for the graphics. Uh, PNG is the recommended file format for working with iPhone, iPod Touch, and the iPad. Some design, further design considerations. Now these are all new items that have been or have been added or changed for the iPad. First of all, you're going to have the split view available to you. Now, the split view, and I'll talk about this in a later, more in depth in a later presentation, but the split view allows for a flattening of your hierarchical view. You're going to, in, in the past when we're programming with the iPhone and the iPod Touch, quite often we're working with a table view and it may have a lot of various depths before we actually get to the detail of information. 
The concept of the split view is that we'll have uh, more of our table view on one side and then go directly to that detail view on the other side of the screen, thus flattening the hierarchical display of the information much more quickly and making it very useful. Second of all, we're going to have popovers. Popovers are for displaying our additional information in a modal or non-modal format for the user so that you have more control over the information. Let's say you wanted to enlarge the font. It would be possible to tap on a button on an application and bring up a popover that allows you to increase the font size or change the uh, font type or just change all kinds of uh, various things. You can think of these as your um, inspector type views if you're used to working with a Macintosh or if you're more familiar with the Windows environment more of a properties type list so that you could change and control it. Now of course that's not the only limitation on popovers. Uh, popovers are going to be very popular control and again we'll talk at that about popovers specifically in a later demonstration. We also are going to have a results list button which is going to be a system button that's going to allow us to show and work with search results very quickly and easily from within our applications. Should make working with searches a little bit easier than what they've been in the past on the iPhone or the iPod Touch. Um, our modal views are going to be changed a little bit. We're going to have different presentation styles available to us on the modal views which will be a, a nice addition. Uh, it's not just going to be a box darkening the rest of the screen so we'll have a little bit more control over that. Toolbars are going to change a little bit. We're going to have flexibility on the location. They're not going to be limited to just simply at the bottom or at the top of our application but we're going to be able to locate them in different places around the screen. The keyboard, if you've been playing with the SDK at all yet, um, you've, you've already noticed that the keyboard has a lot more functionality and customizability built into it. Again, we'll address that more in depth in a later lecture, but the keyboard is going to be adjustable. Um, one of the really cool things about the multi-finger touch recognition or gestures that are included in the iPad, if you've worked with the iPhone SDK or iPod Touch SDK in the past, you may have noticed that this device was capable of handling 10 fingers on the screen at any one time. Now, of course, this was entirely impractical given the small size of the iPod or the iPhone Touch, excuse me, the iPhone. Um, you, 10 fingers on it filled up the entire screen and you really couldn't make any kind of a gesture. But now we're all seeing the purpose for Apple's development and inclusion of that in the SDK, that, that the ability to register all 10 figures and be able to do interesting gestures, um, I'm very excited and looking forward to seeing what people come up with for the multi-touch recognition. That's going to be a very exciting addition to the whole system. So let's take a couple of seconds and talk about the Software Developer's Kit itself. If you're developing or have developed for the iPhone and iPod Touch, then the adjustment to developing with the iPad is very simple and straightforward. Uh, the SDK is very similar. Uh, we've just simply got some new features added to it, some additional capabilities. At the time of this lecture, we're now at version 3.2.2.2 beta 2, uh, which can be downloaded from the Apple developers website. This is only available to people who have standard or enterprise licenses. Uh, at this time, it is not freely available to just anybody or people with a university license. So you will have to have a standard or enterprise license at this point in time. I'm sure that'll change once the SDK is out of beta and more widely available. But we are still dealing with a lot of bugs in the system, so if you're working with the beta, you should be aware that you are working with a beta. Um, so if you're installing this beta and you're also doing iPhone and iPod Touch development, you do want to make sure that you install this to a different folder on your system, which can be done very easily through the file installation portion of it. When it's asking for the location, just select other and create a new folder. Um, I called mine developer underscore beta so that I can locate it very easily when I'm working with iPad development. 